Good morning, GDQ. Thank you all so much for being here on this fine Wednesday morning of cartoons. Uh, before I introduce myself, let's get a coordinate with our couch. I'm Murder Storm 331. I'm Tempest Mask 1000, or some of you know me as Steve. Uh, I, I'm, I'm nobody. <laughs> I'm, I'm cypher. Just I'm ran Gargoyles remastered. <laughs> yeah, killed that run, by the way. Uh, for some background, Tempest and Rotor are both 80% runners in this game. Cypher is my former co-op partner in this game. And another honorable mention to Infinite Mystery, who bought a shirt exclusively for this run off in the green room. <laughs> So, uh, having last run this game in HDQ 2020 on a or older port that wasn't quite optimal, we now have access to the Calabunga Collection, which has every Retro Turtles game in one nice, convenient package. So this is the one I'm going to be playing for you today. This is the Steam Edition. So we're going to go ahead and select our game, select our turtle. We're going to actually gonna skip the cutscene because the, the intro song isn't quite as good. So can I get a countdown from my couch? Three, Three two, two, one. one. Go! go yeah. Hang, Hang on, on, April. April. <laughs> yeah. All right, so Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, this hello. game was originally released in uh, 1989 okay. by Konami. This was the first of their many beat-em-ups for the series. And uh, as you may remember, Elrock has two main modes of attack. There's the usual attack, and there is the special attack, which is when you press the normal and jump together. And this is the strongest attack that the Turtles have to offer, but Donatello's is one of the best within the game, and for good reason. He's, He's absolutely the best in the game, no question. He's overpowered. <laughs> Now, Raphael has probably the weirdest uh, special rolling attack. Not as nearly as good as the jump slash. Yeah. And uh, it's also worth noting that there will be a dive kick, which is actually going to come up pretty shortly. So we're coming up to the first boss fight, which is, of course, Rock Steady. Now, if you saw Elrock do this last time, the quick kill is going to be looking a little bit different this time. So we got a little poke, poke, strike. But then pay attention to what he does now. All right, let's see if this works. Ooh, it bounces back a little bit. There we go. Very nice. There we Very go. Nice. So that the dive beautiful. came. And moonwalk. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> moonwalk. yeah. Nice. Michael Jackson impression. Let's go. <laughs> so, yeah, the dive kick is apparently just as strong, if not a bit stronger. It's just a matter of making sure it lands. Uh, one technique that I would recommend to anybody trying it out is do the jump, let go of the directional stick, and then do the diagonal input plus the attack button. It works nine times out of ten for me. Now, we're going into five different stages. Every time we see a title card, that's going to be Elrock's health automatically recovered. But, of course, with this being a beat-em-up game, we have what's called the ranking system. So the more enemies Elrock defeats, the harder the game can potentially get, usually by how many enemies pop up or their overall behavior. So I'll explain a bit more on that later, but right now we got, which is coming up like the one and only major skip, really, of the run, but a fantastic one at that, found by Sewer Bushido. As you can see, Elrock is holding a bit diagonally downward and continuing to rhythmically press game. the attack button, which is scrolling the camera, pushing us into the camera. Say hi to T-Bop. Hi. Hey. And we got ourselves <laughs> our, into the boss arena right away. Now, it's going to be a bit more enclosed, so it can be a bit harder to hit him. And if you let him so much as attack, he'll definitely knock you back, because that's also the same risk you run with Rocksteady. But that was a great fight, and now we're jumping into a hole that does not exist. Killing it. One thing I want to point out, though, is that um, you have to be very careful when doing the skip, because you might accidentally s spawn Bebop during it, and he might get trapped off screen. Yeah, that's never fun. Also, you got to make sure that the camera has just enough uh, legibility to make sure that the transition into the next level is good enough. Otherwise, it can be a little bit weird. See, this game is actually pretty well made, which is why um, Super Bushido's find was so major for us, because we practically don't have much else going for it. So what you're going to see is mostly Elrock taking advantage of his surroundings, knowledge of the enemy placements, and what else can just go as an advantage for him. Also, now, a quick call out, like, uh I think following what uh, Elrock mentioned about the ranking, the ranking I, I believe was in your favor uh, this time. That's why norm normally in some runs you can use what's uh, considered a magic pixel between the water and the ground that uh, the foot soldiers wouldn't be able to see you. Um, and you can just pick at them and take them out all day. But of course, uh, Elrock taking the, the, the aggressive, but also He's very seasoned in this. He knows how to handle the soldiers and the mousers as they come out. Absolutely. And because it's Cypher's favorite move, here's a wall jump. Wall jump, <laughs> yes! <laughs> yeah, you can do that in this game, even if it's off of nothing. 
And yeah, as Cypher mentioned about the Magic Pixel, we're actually going to be seeing this for the next upcoming boss fight. So we got Baxter Stockman. Elrock is going to stand in that right position. And if we try to get it just right, there we go. Baxter Stockman can only move up and down. And we got to get eight strong attack hits on him just like that. Nice. Move to the left and automatic fast transition. So I'll talk a bit about this one. This is where the rake system becomes incredibly important. We only have two lives to work with, but I'm actually going to be taking a death at this point because I'm going to be trying to lower the rank for a couple of reasons. Big reason is we want to drop the enemy spawn count, but the other one actually has to do with the boss of this stage. I'm going to take this hit from this barrel. Take out those guys. Uh, one thing that was not mentioned, uh, also props to Sura Bushido discovered that this game ranks up every two minutes, so you're definitely incentivized to speedrun this game. That death is fine. It needed to happen in this room, so we're fine. Yeah. Gonna be spawning this car, hit those jerks, missed one, that's okay, I think. Uh, this could be a bit dicey. Uh, yeah, that's unfortunate. Get out of here. Alright, it's gonna take a moment. One guy decided to be the hero. Nice use of the cone there to, to block one of them. Thank you. Right, I got hit by that. Indeed. The, the barrel. Now, coming up to one of the potentially hardest fights to master within the speedrun, no matter what, what you're doing. And, uh, oh, you got to move more to the right. Yeah. Okay. No, no, I was set up the vertical. Oh, okay. We're fair, good. fair, fair. Right. So we got Rocksteady and Bebop together now. The objective hit the both of them as many times as you can before they potentially retaliate. And we nice. got it. That is not easy to pull off for one of multiple reasons. Indeed. So this game can potential. Oh, actually, wait, quick shout out to the Kiss team. If you're playing with more than one players, the one with the higher score Let's will get the matches the bandana, yes. Yo, there you go, that too. Now we're coming up to the highway of the foot, which is scene three. Yeah, so bosses in this game can punish you if you so much as get the wrong input at the wrong time or press a little extra. It's as, almost as if the game knows, which, by the way, shout out to my friend LZ Cards fan 23 for that phrase. Immortal words never to be forgotten. But the game can indeed keep in mind what inputs you press. It certainly feels like that anyway. But yeah, we just mm. got more walking to do. Uh, roadkill Rodneys can be very annoying because their hitboxes, they can get hit by the- Oh, I did not attacks. want to push that yet. That's not good. Ooh. That was a mistake. Their hitboxes though, they are hittable with special attacks, but you know, I guess half and half depending on if it hits. So most runners really just use the dive kicks and they can be taken down in two dive kicks. So it's pretty much good enough anyway. By the way, Mausers in the last level, they're pretty synonymous with the video games. They pop, they constantly pop up in all of those video games, and they just make for the perfect enemy. It's funny because if you remember the 80s TV show, which this game is clearly based off of, the Mausers only really appeared in like one episode with human Baxter Stockman. So their immortal appearances in future material have the video games. They, they owe it to the video games, really. Top pixel here is completely invincible machine gun fire, so we're going to exploit that. There is one thing I need to talk about once they despawn that has to do with RNG, but after that we're going to do some donations, so bear with us. Uh, so what's going to happen is these guys are going to leave. We're going to have three enemies come in that are 99% fixed. Okay, we got a fourth ground guy. Good. Excellent. Best RNG possible. Donations, please. Perfect. We have lots of donations coming in. We have $10 from Alara. Hey, Elrock, good luck on the run. You got this. Another 10 if you get five flying bots in one hit. 20 if you Ooh. get all seven. Hello from the floor crew. Ooh, pressure. <laughs> <laughs> we also have $20 from Foxy Firemelon. Kawabanga. So sad I can't be there to watch you run in person, but I know you're going to do to absolutely shred this game. Clearing TMNT on one credit is an incredible feat. Donating the amount of credits it took me to be the game in the arcade as a kid. Thank you so much, both of you. I we got we time for one more if you got one. Perfect. We have $25 from Wilhelm Screamin. Good luck, Elrock. Do you know how we know Donnie's weapon is made of wood? Because they got a splinter. Mm. Oh. <laughs> oh. It's a friend of mine in California. He loves puns. <laughs> loves them, loves them, loves them. Good I man. I appreciate that. So uh, what we're going to do here is we're coming up on the end of the third music loop, which means I'm going to start killing enemies. I'm going to try to do so qu quickly but safely, which, you know, those don't usually coincide. Okay, now I'm just getting trolled. Uh -oh. Stop, guys. Uh, okay. This is mean. Yeah, that's really mean. Uh-oh. Serious time. We're, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. I think. Okay, maybe not. All right, so got to play safe. Okay. Oh, Ooh, clutch. God. 
And the good part is that we are moving into another stage title card, so his health is going back up. Oh, no, somebody let Mikey drive. <laughs> Who let Mikey drive? Let Mike Come on! Oh, uh, poor party bus. But unfortunately, <laughs> too, now our master splinter is uh, kidnapped by the Mauser, so we got to go save him. Yeah, uh, this is probably one of the shorter stages. We are indeed moving into two more full-on levels. It's also they... run killer du jour. <laughs> True. This is, despite being short, probably the hardest stage in the game. This this run has this stage has something like four or five different segments that can just snatch it right from me. Okay, good. I got good behavior out of him. So we yeah. talked about the magic pixel, and it's going to be coming back right here. Elorak is going to stand on that blue line, and uh, if he gets it just right, the foot soldiers will be forced to jump on the platform, and then he'll be able to pick them from afar. Hopefully the spear guys, though, won't have a say, because they can choose to impale you at any given point, and it's never fun. It pushes you back. It's, it's the reach that really makes them just as threatening as Donatello himself, really. And Good now call. we're going to be coming up to a big, giant, overgrown corkscrew yet again. Elrock is going to position himself to do what um, the donation from earlier talked about. We got to see how many bots we get. Five. Five. There Gosh. we go. Never unhappy with five. It is definitely possible to kill all seven, but... It's it's tough to say the least. Okay, I got the double kill there. Very and if good. you don't get more than like four drones, that room is going to be a pain. It really depends. Um, I'm okay with three or four if I am on good health. But if I have like four or less health, it's really it's really dangerous. Also, no running. Okay, good, no running. <laughs> Sometimes a yellow foot soldier can run in from the left side of the screen to catch up with you. That was rude. And Ooh, coming up rude. is Grantor. He's yes. going to be one of the three bosses that takes, like, only one point of damage regardless of what attack you use. Yes, and I'm giving my commentators full reign to talk about how much they dislike this boss, so have at Worst it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I hate this beak-faced rock man. No slight to my Mega Man friendos, though. <laughs> no, just, just uh. as, a, as a kid fighting this guy, like... Elrock, as you see, he's moving vertically to the kite uh, Granitor here. But it just, if you were to fight him on the side, he, he has like almost like invincibility and just will knock you just all over the place. Yeah. He has a reactive her, uh, hitbox. If you try to approach him while he's active, he gets to hit you first pretty much all the time, which is why I'm having him chase me. He can't get into position to hit me before Donnie can reach him. Donnie's vertical and horizontal hitboxes are just so big that this guy really shouldn't get a chance if I'm able to play lame. There is a faster strat to this boss, but unfortunately going fast is really unsafe and it's really inconsistent because his hit bo his hurtbox is essentially the size of his belt buckle. It's really hard to hit him on horizontal, even though he has like linebacker shoulders. It doesn't make any sense, but it's just how it's designed. Nice. Also, for some reason, this game made him blue. Pretty sure he's not like that in the show. Also, you yes. can't really see well his done. mouth. <laughs> All right, still on pace. We've rescued Splinter with the giant yellow screen. Well, there is also a safe spot right near Granitar with his flamethrower, but it's not really recommended in a speedrun setting. Absolutely, Rotor, because if you get hit by that flamethrower, there's a special damage animation which also stuns you for a bit, especially when you're going for a high time. That's never fun. There's a reason why we call him the fun police. For sure. All right, so the start of the Technodrome, this is the last scene. I'm going to move ahead a little bit because I'm trying to despawn some enemies. This is a very beautifully uh, made okay. stage. That's hey. not good. Ooh. Yeah. All right, I have work to do. This is going to be quiet time. I got things spawned that I didn't want yet, but I got to make do. Not good. If that hit me, I was dead. Ooh. All right, they are playing extra defensive right now. I don't like this at all. And they're synced up. Yeah, no, 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 no. Thankfully, we can break out of that and not take damage. They had full health, too. All right, guys, tell me how you really feel. Nice. <sighs> yeah, that was that was a bit much. Ooh, seriously, could have given me a heart attack from that one. Imagine how I felt. Yeah, I know, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we're gonna spawn these guys and just completely ignore them. We're going to top pixel, jump a freeze ray, jump a freeze ray, jump the rope ladder. And then onto the elevator. Where that guy's gonna try and catch up to us, but he's going back to his home planet. He's doing some air walking for sure. Yeah, even the roadkill Rodneys can be like that, and it's the funniest thing ever. Another notable thing about the ranking system, you noticed that Elrock had two pizzas that he could have picked off of at the Granitor fight. In the normal uh, any percent Preferentially, we want to see one because it just means the ranking system is at its lowest. So, yeah. Got to play a little safe here. Bear with me. No problem at all. The health is no bueno. 
Yeah, but we're nearly there. This is the last room of enemies leading up to our final series of three bosses. So this is pretty crazy. Hey, I got two despawns. Sweet. Nice. If you dive kick Rodney's off to the left, there's a chance they might completely despawn from the stage. It's, it's awesome. Kill this guy. Now, here's the real hit squad. Five spear guys. Hardest foot soldiers in the game. Uh, okay. Y'all are making me play safe. I understand. Uh, this is fine. So you all are getting to see a really good exhibition of well why done. the RNG in this game is such a mess. Enemy behavior in this game is not consistent. Sometimes they're aggressive, sometimes they're defensive. This is Trag. Generally a nuisance. General Trag? Generally a pain in the butt. So with Trag, it's very similar to the Granitor fight, except I actually find it to be much easier because Trag has more incentive to aggro you. He's also a lot faster in terms of movement speed, which is great for a speed run because he's just going to just hoof it after us like this, and that means I get a better hit. Once I have to move to the vertical position, I can just fight it the same way I do Granitor, but he's a lot less trolly. He might pause to taunt us occasionally like that, but his taunt takes forever, unlike Granitor, who can like almost come out of his almost instantly. Uh, we have time for a quick donation if you have one. We have $25 from Tempest Steve's awesome, awesome mom. Oh, Go Turtle nice. Power. Great job, Tempest Steve and GDQ, for all your fundraising efforts. I love you, mom. Thank you so much. So I'm going to talk about Crank for a little before we get back to donations. This fight is the last of what Rotorstorm mentioned in that we have one HP hits on these bosses here. So no matter what we hit him with, we're doing the same amount of damage. So with Krang, we can't really force the fight to go fast, but we can play it safe by just completely landing him out and poking him in the kneecaps like this. You'll see me go for some cross-up attempts on occasion that are kind of dangerous, but not too bad. That said, uh, I'm gonna try and focus from here, but we are good for donations. Perfect. We have so many donations coming in for you. We have $10 from Alara. I'm a m woman of my word, Elrock. Nice job on the bots. Donkey. $25 from Smart Blue. Let's go, Elrock. Let's kick Shell. Indeed. <laughs> Along the same lines, $250 from Womple Fwomple. Let's kick Shell. All right, thank you, Anade. We're going to have to cut you off there because now we're coming into the final fight. This is Shredder. So you'll see him immediately split into two clones, though Fake One will lose his helmet after quite a few attacks. And this is good because Shredder here has two different scary attacks like that one right there. That is the Mutagen Beam. Elrock wants to avoid that because that is instant kill. So by removing the helmet from a Shredder, they can no longer do that. Therefore, it's a extra layer of safety that ensures that such danger won't happen. It is pretty reactable though, and of course now we've got the setup that we need in order to safely pick him out. Now time will not be on the final hit, however once Shredder goes down, it'll be once we get to see the Technodrome. Once we see Shredder's, the real one's helmet go down though, he is almost down for the count, and he is susceptible to special attacks. Krang, Granitor, and Trag, they do not take extra damage from these specials, but Shredder will, so the reason I'm not going for them, though, is because it's unsafe. If I time it incorrectly and he mutagen beams in response, I die, and I don't want that. So I'm just playing it completely safe. We'll be able to ride it out from here. I am glad I got to show off the easy, quote-unquote, strat for you all, which features the fake one running against the wall like that. I just think it looks hilarious that he's trying to flank me, but he can't, and he doesn't have mutagen beam to back him up. Once the helmet's gone, he loses access to magic. So from here, it's just going to be a grind out of making sure we get him out. I think on... One death rank, he takes 60. He has 60 HP, I want to say. He's also playing incredibly defensively. As you can see, he can duck my attacks on reaction, which is not fun. I am glad I got that reposition, though. Whoa, hello. Okay. Hits. Yeah, this More is hits. very scary, <laughs> admittedly. Uh, I think we have time for a donation, though, since this is all going to be doing. Perfect. We have $10 from TMNT for Life, donating during one of my favorite collections, Donatello for Life. I love Donatello, so I absolutely agree with that one. Fun fact, I still have uh, his mask and bow staff from my childhood. It's a, uh, it's quite the toy. I think it was from the uh, 03 show, I believe it was. And yeah, shout out to all of the TMNT cannons. Mutant Mayhem 2003, 2012, Rise, Rise of the, the TMNT. TMNT. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're all bangers, trust me. No matter which turtles you like, we respect you for it. And if you want to join our community, there's the TMNT RTA server, which you can find on the SRC leaderboards. We love having new people. We'd love to see you if you would like to try out these speed runs for yourself, and we'd be more than happy to teach you. All, all right, right, we're there in the goes. sequence. Come on. 
So we got this. Come on, Don. Let's go. God, the, the defense. <laughs> Yeah, yeah this, this, is, this is some unusually high AI defense, so he must know I'm playing for my friends. Yes! Yes! We got the one CC, folks! Revenge well done. has been claimed, and that is... Time! Time! Time. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well done, o Rock. This is exactly what I wanted. I am well done right now. Oh, my gosh. So I had to give another honorable mention, Cantaloupe Me, who ran Legend of Zelda yesterday. He had his redemption arc from AGDQ 2020 for the, the botched trap room. I lost this one CC in 2020 in the before times, right before the pandemic. So I'm so glad I got to show this for you all today. I'm very happy GDQ was willing to accept it again. And thank you all so much, everybody, for being here this week. The donations, the support. Keep continuing to beat cancer. We're going to get our initials here in just a moment. Thank you all again so, so much. This is my eighth GDQ run, and this is probably the most emotional I've ever been after one. So <laughs> this feels amazing. Oh, I'm, eh, can't go back. <laughs> we'll just, I was going to do GDQ, but I got trigger happy. We'll go, ah! Ah! <laughs> all right. Thank you all so much. Bless.